Today marks the anniversary of Beijing's 1989 Tiananmen Square massacre. Commemorations are banned, and social media users are even reporting that the candle emoji con cannot be used today. For several weeks leading up to the June 4th, 1989 date, the square had become a focal point for protests against the economic hardship and corruption. Students also gathered to demand democratic rights and freedoms from the communist government. But by June 4th, Chinese leaders sent in troops to crush the demonstrations. Footage of a lone protester standing in front of a line of tanks has become one of the most enduring symbols of the crackdown. No one knows exactly how many people were killed on June 4th, 1989. Some say hundreds, others thousands. Wu'er Kaichi is one of the leaders of the student pro-democracy movement in China from 1989, and he joins me now from Taiwan, where he currently lives. Welcome to the program, and thank you so much for joining us. Uh, you are a survivor of the massacre that the Chinese government seems to want to erase from the memory of its citizens. How does that make you feel? Well, I'm a, well, so being a survivor itself, uh, you have to sort of carry the guilt. Uh, but then also the fact that I cannot commemorate, uh, we cannot go back, go to Hong Kong. We cannot go, uh, the Hong Kong people who have been holding this uh, candle vigil for many, many years cannot commemorate. It also shows the uh, f uh, fragility of the uh, Chinese communist regime. Um, it is a day of commemoration for the young who sacrifice their lives. Uh, prohibiting people from doing just this uh, commemoration uh, uh, is uh, is an inhumane uh, a commemoration. Uh, remembrance is one of the most humble force of resistance. Chinese Communist regime also knows that. So there, the logic for the Chinese Communist regime lays there. They know. We want to remember, and then that's the that's the one thing the Communist Party afraid the most: remembrance. Absolutely, um, and take us back, if you will, um, to those moments in the days of, of the early summer of 1989. You were 21 back then. What kind of change did you want to see? Well, the. Uh, 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 Political reform was promised uh, by Chinese regime, by Deng Xiaoping to Chinese people. We were simply demanding they fulfill their promises. Uh, the, but in China, uh, even in 1989, 10 years after the Deng Xiaoping era of uh, reopening reform, still it is a very, very uh, uh, suppressed uh, uh, regime, a suppressed society. Taking the street uh, of Beijing is not an easy um, thing to do. It's not a, they're, they're, they are very, um, they're dangerous. But I think the students uh, in Beijing uh, across the city and then across the country have demonstrated a strong uh, uh, determination that we want that political reform once we were promised. And then the response from the government at the beginning was like police, batons, and then uh, uh, a fake dialogue that they, they mm. all strike uh, a dialogue to, um, uh, to uh, 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 to have the government organize the student organize uh, organizations members to have them, so we escalated uh, the movement into hunger strike. We have get the support from all over the country, all over the world, but we could not move the emperor in who lives in the. I mean, they call themselves the general secretary. So uh, they answered us at the end with bloodshed, uh, uh, later known uh to the world as. June 4th massacre. Absolutely. And I mean, it, it was a massacre that, that shocked the world indeed. Uh, and I'm wondering what, what your thinking was back then. I mean, did you suspect, you know, as you were going through the hunger strikes, as, as you were demonstrating that the Chinese government would indeed crack down so hard and send in tanks and literally run down the protesters? We never thought that the Chinese government would actually mobilize standing troops against peaceful demonstrators. Uh, it's, it's part of the par Chinese Communist Party's propaganda is that they are the uh, people's government and then uh, the, the standing army, people's liberation army is people's army. It's unthinkable for any Chinese citizen in 1989 
before the June Force, before the night of June Force, to imagine Chinese regime open fire to its own people. Uh, it was, so it certainly didn't occur to us. We thought, okay, yeah, they're going to suppress the movement, probably using the police baton and then uh, club us out of the square, uh, using real ammunition and then roll over uh, people, protesters on the, on the street with, uh, you know, um, tanks and military uh, people movers. And that is just, uh, it shocked all of us. I, I think you just said it shocked the world. Yes, it also certainly shocked uh, a billion Chinese. And you had to flee China, we understand, after uh, the 1989 massacre. You, you haven't seen your family since? Um, That's when correct. You re- I when was, you um, reflect, I, I mean, this on- commitment that you have, was, was it worth the decades of sacrifice that followed? Well, uh, if you if you ask me, is it worth it? I don't know how to how to calculate it. But well, I can answer you in a different angle that I don't regret what I did. We didn't do anything wrong. Uh, the price we pay was high, were high, uh, so high uh, we don't know how to uh, really calculate. Uh, is it worth it? Uh, but we also know the what we did in Tiananmen inspired. Uh, people to follow around the world, especially in your con- in, in the country of in, in Germany. I mean, it basically leads to the peaceful ending of the people's uh, uh, demonstration in the, at that time East Germany, and then eventually lead to the uh, re- uh, falling of the Berlin Wall and then reunification of Germany. The impact of the 1989 student movement is huge to the world. Unfortunately, just not to China. Wu Er Kai Chi, we thank you so much for joining us here on DW News, one of the leaders of the it's student pro democracy movement in China in 1989. We appreciate it. It's my pleasure. And as we've been hearing on this 32nd anniversary, police in Hong Kong have arrested pro democracy activist Chow Hung Tung. Usually, she would be leading a mass vigil for the victims of the Tiananmen Square massacre, but Hong Kong authorities have banned the commemoration for a second year in a row. DW correspondent Phoebe Kong met with her recently, and her report was filmed before the arrest. A warning shot to would-be protesters on the anniversary of the day that quashed democracy. Activist Chow Hang Tong arrested by plainclothes police. Her alleged crime promoting unauthorized assembly. Chow was one of the few leaders of Hong Kong's pro-democracy movement not already behind bars. The arrest comes a day after authorities threatened to jail anyone attending the vigil for up to five years. For over three decades, the sea of candlelight in Hong Kong kept the events of 1989 alive. The city's annual vigil, a symbol of defiance unthinkable on mainland China. But now, even handing out candles is heavily policed. Weeks ahead of the 32nd anniversary, the organization Hong Kong Alliance, led by Chow, began promoting the annual commemoration, the first since Beijing imposed a national security law here. Chow at the time, eerily prescient. People are even more supportive, I would say, but the support is less like expressive. It's actually gone beyond just the remembrance of Tiananmen. It also goes to the heart of what Hong Kong is, whether we still have the fight, <laughs> fight in our heart, whether we are still resisting, whether we can still preserve our freedom by our own action. Also, we are shared this fate with the people who are already arrested and in custody. But their hands are largely tied. Police have banned the vigil for the second year in a row, citing COVID safety restrictions although other mass gatherings like concerts and soccer matches have resumed. Just two days before the anniversary, the Alliance's June 4th Museum, a museum commemorating the events of 1989, was closed down due to a licensing investigation by the authorities. Many of the organization's leading members are in jail for protesting, including Chairman Lee Chuck Yan. We spoke to the veteran activist shortly before he was sentenced to 18 months in prison. We are in the darkness, we are in light in a tunnel. But if everyone still come up with a candle, that is the spirit that we are looking for. I believe in the people of Hong Kong. We live in truth. Make sure that 
uh, the Hong Kong people know that we never give up, even though maybe we have to go to jail. For the Alliance, it's not just about commemorating the protests of 1989, but about being able to dissent, to be able to call for an end to one party rule. But democracy protests are now labeled as subversion by Beijing. It could be a reason to outlaw the activism and the Alliance itself. We are not self censoring ourselves. There's no question that the government wants to eradicate us. The risk is not insisting on some slogan or some, some principle. The risk is what we are doing. If you are sincerely fighting for the end of one party dictatorship, there will always be that risk. It's, it, 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 the risk cannot be avoided by just like crossing out one of the slogans. Whether this happens sooner or whether this happens a long way away depends on how hard we resist, resist, right? Workers at the Alliance June 4th Museum have begun preserving the Tiananmen Square exhibits in digital format. If China continues to close down all avenues of physical protest in Hong Kong, Moving historical evidence to an online museum may end up being one of the last remaining ways of showing resistance. And for more, let's bring in DW Hong Kong correspondent Phoebe Kong, who put that piece together for us. Phoebe joins us now. Phoebe, uh, the arrest of Chow Hong Tong. Just walk us through the significance of this move and what s signal it sends to the pro-democracy movement in Hong Kong. Well, Chao Hong Tong, the 37-year-old lawyer, uh, is one of the prominent activists in Hong Kong, also a core member of the annual candlelight vigil organization, Hong Kong Alliance, as mentioned in the report, that she has been engaging in Chinese human rights work and also local activism uh, for a long period of time. Um, so uh, her arrest, uh, which is pretty high profile on these sensitive dates, on the anniversary of the Tiananmen crackdown, which is uh, like one of the most sensitive uh, political taboo in China, that uh, her arrest actually uh, is a warning sent by the authorities to the democracy camp and also the general public in Hong Kong as a whole, that um, the authorities are not going to tolerate any kind of commemoration, that not only they're going to ban the uh, signature candlelight vigil, but also going after uh, individuals who want to sustain that kind of commemoration and resistance. So um, this is uh, definitely a deterrent on these sensitive days that uh, the authorities want to stamp out all kind of commemoration or any kind of physical mourning that uh, about this uh, very, um, like, uh, the throne of uh, the Communist Party, uh, the, the Chinese ruling party. So the official ban is then in place. Talk with us about the mood. Are, are people still determined to gather? Well, um, the atmosphere on the ground is uh, really tense. Like. Uh, uh, days or even weeks ahead of the anniversary, the local community and the governments are, are all like uh, discussing about like whether it is still legal to commemorate the June 4th Tiananmen crackdown in Hong Kong in 2021. That uh, and many officials uh, have been warning the public, especially the uh, law enforcement, the police uh, officers. They they're warning the public that um, not to take any risk of like endangering themselves, like putting themselves in uh, under like um, a kind of like a possible offense of the uh, uh, the public ordinance and uh, also the national security law. This is the first anniversary since the implementation of the national security law. But of course, some activist groups are, are still uh, wanting to carry on the commemoration by maybe setting up some uh, street booths later on in Hong Kong today uh, on the streets. And some churches are holding um, like candlelight vigil uh, or prayers uh, gatherings within their uh, premises. But they are all warned by the officers that the police actually deployed up to 7,000 officers today just to guard every uh, corner of Hong Kong and especially the now banned candlelight vision venue, the Victoria Park, they have already sealed up that park to uh, really try to stop anyone to um, carry on this kind of signature activism uh, today. But uh, we are expecting to see some kind of defiance and we will see like how the uh, police is going to react that they have already uh, intimidated people and threatening like arrest uh, today. Phoebe Kong in Hong Kong. Thank you.